Yep, we're just rebuilding hinge mounts. I used way more epoxy than I needed to, which seems to always be the case with these stinking jobs, but so be it. This is an HP Envy Touch Smart 17, and what I've done, and I'll go ahead and remove this screw. No, no, I won't actually. It's a bit of a pain to get it to where it was. But what I've done is replaced the keyboard in this. Here, I'll show you the old part. This is the original keyboard for this computer that was giving the user some problems. I think some keys died. And it had a backlight layer on it. That backlight layer is now right here. Unfortunately, the replacement keyboard, I made the mistake of getting one with no backlight layer. And because of that, well, as you can see, the uh, the wire that is on the keyboard was glued straight to the keyboard, and I couldn't get it off without destroying it. So I had to peel the backlight layer off of the old keyboard and then put it on top of the wire rather than on bottom. Uh, this shouldn't be a huge problem, honestly. It, uh, As far as that goes, it only really covers a small section of the keyboard in the first place. Um, in fact, it, yeah, it, it may darken the backlight on alt and or the space area. It's probably not going to make a difference. So the keyboard is this sort of frame. You'll notice there's a black one on the new part, but the old part is gray. It has tabs and it has these clips. Now there are plastic teeth here that catch. Actually, there's another one there. Yeah, there's, okay, it's hidden. That's why I can't show it to you. It's underneath that wire. But there are teeth here that catch. So you set it down and you slide it in place. And it's very difficult because this thing's warpy and wobbly and it, it's kind of a pain. But once you get it to slide to where these teeth go in, you haven't stuck these cables underneath it or these cables or these cables. There's about a billion cables you have to keep from getting underneath it. Once you get that in place, you're good to go. Um, I put one screw here because that, uh, well, that's the way it came. And then this metal frame retains everything, so I don't strictly need anything to be adhesive attached. Um, I can just screw this metal frame back down. Same problem, though. There's about a billion wires. Also, this, this one wire that went between here and there, it, uh, it was attached to this metal frame, so I just kept it attached to the metal frame the whole time. Look, do you see this uh, touchpad wire here doesn't want to go? Yeah, that figures. Now, you have to, obviously you have to disassemble to this point, and it was somewhat annoying. Um, the motherboard goes here. The motherboard is especially annoying to get off, but, yeah, I mean, you see I did it. You could do it too. Then this metal frame, you see it has tabs there that slide in. See these tabs here? They're kind of between the teeth of the keyboard frame. So you're going to want to make sure you get those tabs in. It's much easier to get this apart than back together, by the way. This is, this is, this is mind-numbingly annoying to get it all to go back together. Um, you know, good luck doing it without breaking something. Um, I feel like I'm going to break something the whole time I do this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, those are supposed to go down in there, but as you can see, I'm having some real difficulty. Is there something blocking one or more of them? It actually looks like... Huh. No, I don't think that's being blocked. But... Yeah, like I said, very frustrating, if nothing else, very frustrating. So, that area there, there we go. See, I got all the tabs in, and it goes down. Now, strictly speaking, it looks like I didn't have to take this one tiny keyboard screw, frame screw, out over here. Um, as early as I did, it can go back in. Now, I've noticed that for some reason these, these frame screws right here don't hold very well. Oh, there we go. And the metal frame just takes a bunch of little 2x3 metric screws. It's uh, pretty straightforward, really. That 
feels like it's biting wrong. I don't know why. I don't like that, but this thing is mind-numbingly frustrating. So screws over here. There are a lot of screws involved in this, and I mean a lot. So it would not shock me in the least to discover that I left something out somewhere. God knows. Two by three, two by three, there's two by threes everywhere. Yeah. Now you'll notice there are a couple of them here that don't have any numbers on them and that look like they take bigger screws. Pretty sure that's because they do. In fact, if you bring the motherboard over here to where it sits, you can see the motherboard screws fall on these two. So that's why that is the way it is. Anyway, that's back in. We can go ahead, and this is actually really important. Put the power button board Put the power button board cable back and you've got to make sure that the power button board cable is straight because I have had to disassemble one of these before due to the cable not being in straight. Not just not being in but specifically being out of alignment. <clears throat> Didn't go very well for me. Now, another problem is these hinge mounts over here are busted. There's two of them at least that are just gone. I'm gonna have to epoxy those. So this board's gonna go in here eventually. Um, I'm looking it over. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy these and I'll get back to you on that. Epoxy time! Epoxy time! Loctite plastic bonding epoxy, which I only seem to be able to get online now for some reason. Gonna need a little bit, not a lot. Uh, that's a that's a lot of that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not ideal, but whatever. And I have so much trouble with this stuff. I swear. <sighs> Dispensing it is no fun. All right. That's the end of that. I have a cut off cotton swab that I use on top of a sticky note, because both of those can be disposed of once I'm done. I have two hinge mounts that are problematic. This one over here and this one over here. Um, this one on the back here is just smashed. I'll go ahead and pick the ruined stuff up there. It's just gone, basically. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not very good. Yeah. That, that mount is in bad shape. <sighs> Try and get this brass anchor to sit there. Sit there. Good boy. And then, once it's in place, we'll try to build up a new edge here, if we can won't be perfect but it does not need to be perfect this laptop's already had the other sides hinge mounts repaired and uh, it was so bad that I actually permanently attached it so the hinge will never come off the base which is uh, unfortunate if I ever actually need to replace the base but I'm hoping that that'll never be necessary with this computer anyway what I'm doing is just filling in these holes here that are, uh, yeah, they're molded into the plastics to kind of hold the thing together a little better, but the problem is they're just holes. I am effectively making them solid instead. Uh, you know, I actually didn't get a very good edge on that, and the anchor seems to be falling out of place. That's better. Then this needs to be pushed back here. Yep, we're just rebuilding hinge mounts. I used way more epoxy than I needed to. 
which seems to always be the case with these stinking jobs, but so be it. So, this stuff, I mean, this epoxy is extremely thick and not really conducive to this kind of work. But um, it's the only stuff I've found that does a good job. So what I typically will do is I'll lay out all this epoxy as best as I can. Then I will put the hinge back down over it. And uh, in many cases, this ends up permanently attaching the hinge. But, you know, if that's what it takes, then so be it. And feeding screws in to line everything up nicely. Yeah, that hinge mount is solid, and that's probably the biggest saving grace of this whole thing, is that that one mount there is fine. This other one's not in great shape. This one actually, I believe, needs to be free for the uh, rear over here. And that one's destroyed, but the other one over here looks okay. Let's check it really quickly to make sure. This uh, speaker is not really attached with much of anything, so it's very frustrating. If it makes me too angry, I may just attach it permanently too because I don't have time for this. There we go. But uh, is that even the correct way that that goes in? I don't know. I can't. I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't think so. There you go. All right. So this, the hole. Yep, I was right. The one over here, which is nearest the tab that comes up here. This one over here actually goes over there all right now, I don't like putting the screw in for the mount that I'm trying to rebuild but in this particular instance yeah there we go it sets so fast this actually is not the correct screw for this one either haha <laughs> I'm having a day I meant to put that here I'm going to put the long screw here. This epoxy sets fairly quickly, which is nice. Yeah, I can't get it any tighter than that. I could have attached it to the hinge first but that would just been that much more effort on top of all the rest so no nah. yeah, I can't stand doing this this whole epoxy hinge repair thing drives me up the wall um, it always feels like I'm doing something really dirty, and part of that's because this is a really dirty thing to have to do. Uh, and it stinks to high heaven. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that. <clears throat> Can't think of anything else to use it on right now, so we'll just trash it. So I don't have to keep smelling it. Anyway, the hinge is now epoxied back together, and we're never going to take those screws out again. So now, it's time to put the motherboard back in place. Have I replaced this thermal grease before? I actually cannot tell if I have or have not. Oh uh, yeah, that looks like I have. So maybe we don't mess with that. Ah uh, yeah, this is the fun part. We need to get all of these wires over the motherboard. And I may just do it this way. Silly though it looks. I may just slap this on top of all the wires to keep them away. Oh, this one got away. I'm going to peel it back. There we go. The backlight wire is staying away too. I actually have tape on these. I think that they weren't holding in properly. Yeah. So, 
I have to assume that if I taped these that there was something wrong. So let's go ahead and get this in place. This wire will stay away. This wire will stay away. These wires are easier to get back over. Um, but those wires are not. So we really need to get this back in place. The motherboard has to go in at kind of an extreme angle here. And it comes down and it always feels like something's jammed. See the USB ports here don't like to line up. You kind of have to warp the board a bit to get them to fall in line. Then this cable loves to hide and that's the power board cable so if it gets stuck under the motherboard which has happened to me before and I made a video about this exact computer where that happened during reassembly and I was embarrassed that I had forgotten it. Um, but if that happens you won't get any power and you'll be like, what? Why not? And it'll all be your fault, and you can make a video being humble like I did. And by humble, I of course mean going, oops, I messed up. Go ahead and get a screw over here on the motherboard. Alright. What else? Screw here. Where the, where the little white arrows point to the screw holes, that's where the screws are. There we go. One goes here. Again, I cannot stress enough, make sure that all these cables are not buried under the board. Because if they are, you'll be uh, disassembling again in no time and feeling very dumb while doing so. And I've got one more and it's this one. I thought it might be but I couldn't see the arrow through the wires. So there we go. Let's go ahead and put the DC jack wire back in this this black clip here that can be bent to uh, allow it some room and then bend it back with your finger. Um, there's this wire here, which I believe goes to these top speakers. I actually don't recall if this goes above or below the DC jack wire, although it's kind of looking like maybe it should be going under it rather than over it. There's also another wire that goes here, but I'm pretty sure that's attached to the top. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, put that under the DC jack wire so that it can't get in the way of the DVD drive track. We have a couple of Wi-Fi card wires here. And I'm not entirely sure how they are supposed to go right now. But black here, black here, uh, white here, white here. All right, so if we put those there, things should just sort of line up okay. Then we have these other wires on the other side. I believe this is a webcam or touch screen, one of the two, maybe both, who knows. Um, there are a couple of different tracks these things can take. This wraps around, but this goes straight up. Now, if I recall correctly, I think the heatsink fan assemblies actually have something to do with how these track. So let's check. Yeah, you're probably going to want to throw the heatsink and fan setup back in before you try to run these wires, just to be on the safe side. So, the way I like to do this is if I can, I want to hook the wires up first. And then, kind of put it back together. But, I think this webcam wire here goes first. Just so that we can get it done there. It can be very difficult to get it down evenly and safely. I keep saying webcam, but it's it's not the webcam, it's the touch screen. I'm almost certain of that. I'm, I'm pretty certain that this is the webcam and this is the touch screen. 
because the webcam would only be four wires USB you know um, and this is the video yeah they both kind of fall into this same track here okay put the video cable in here fold the flip lock connector up put it down while I'm here I'll go ahead and uh, slide this power button board cable into the power button board socket and it's kind of a pain it keeps getting stuck on something there we go so make sure the black line lines up with the end there that's all good there that's good there okay now regarding the power button board uh, it's down here so you see why you have to get that straight before you go laying all this fan junk on top if you don't you end up in trouble because then all this fan junk is on top and you can't do anything about it yeah that fan wire is not supposed to be underneath that heat sink thing there all right we'll go ahead and lay the fan wire back in place it kind of crumples down um, the the brown end goes towards the center of the computer the blue goes that way in case you need the order go ahead and lay this one three screws hold the fan in place don't tighten them too tight there's a piece of tape here that holds the fan to the heat sink. I don't really care. Um, and I also don't like to follow the number diagrams on these things. I really don't care about that either. Doesn't bother me any. I don't care. I like to just do diagonals and then tighten the rest up. Because it doesn't really matter that much. I just don't care. Hmm. Uh, how do you know that you want me to fix your computer? The sheer amount of me saying that I don't care. That, that, that'll give the consumer confidence in my brand, won't it? Uh, but the thing is that it doesn't really matter all that much. Whether you do the diagonals in the numbered order or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, what do we have going on here? several things it seems we have this wire this wire here goes up to here that goes to it looks like a fingerprint sensor click this goes to the DVD drive bracket we'll deal with that later this goes over to the USB and audio board over there so get it in place lock it down these two over here appear to also go to that board, but they are probably separate because they go to uh, the audio, I guess. I'm not sure why there's a separate thing there, but whatever. Alright. And it doesn't really want to fall into this clip here, but I really want it to because that's annoying and I don't want anything to get squished. There we go. It was not very happy about it, but it ultimately fell in line too. Let's drop this connector here. This connector goes to your touchpad. While I'm in here, I'm just going to do a really, really quick, gentle twist. Those seem pretty tight. Touchpad's good. This battery feeds up through, so that's why I'm trying to make sure it stays loose. Our new keyboard is here. This is where things get kind of ugly because a brand new keyboard doesn't have bends in the end and the keyboard's backlight layer is here. Clearly I had some trouble the last time I was reassembling all this. Good lord. Okay. So the tape is clearly here to retain these wires. Brand new keyboard. Nice. Uh, the problem with these flat cables is this is so wide 
and it has to bend so much that it the cable just bends in the middle or on the sides while you're trying to slide it in straight and it doesn't really give you all right there we go try to keep that from sliding out yeah the truly sad thing about this whole setup is that there's no way to test it until it's put basically all the way back together so that covers the motherboard reassembly um, we have I'm checking all of the connectors you shouldn't see any connectors that are disconnected other than maybe these two hard drive connectors because I yanked the cables and this one that goes to something on that board alright where are we we're good okay so next we're gonna end up putting this back in place uh, just check it real quick yeah I also missed there's that which goes to these extra sets of speakers um, so this is this is where things get a little sketchy but bear with me this CR20 whatever battery has to come up through here so fish it through here you also have this CD drive cable which I take loose at the top bracket because the bottom brackets covered by it and then you have this skinny one usually if you fish the battery up and you make sure this doesn't get squished underneath it becomes very easy to do the remaining assembly work so let's go ahead and do our little snap downs around here and here and so on and then this CMOS battery uh, it needs to dangle over there for a bit let's go ahead and hook these speakers up here it just slides right back in it's actually a lot harder to get out you can use a fingernail here and a pry tool or screwdriver here to accomplish that and the tiny connector here which I imagine goes to a microphone or that weird subwoofery speaker over here that I wouldn't call that a subwoofer but what do I know you know I didn't know subwoofers could be one inch wide but I am not an audio psychiatrist okay home stretch here now there's a billion screws here and this is one of the reasons that I went ahead and did a disassembly and then video the uh, reassembly because you can figure out the disassembly from the reassembly and it's easier to take it apart so we want to put the hard drives back but there's about a billion screws um, there are also and this will give you a lot of trouble during disassembly these three teeny tiny number zero Phillips screws that go down here in the battery compartment they are way down here in the battery compartment I actually think you need more light now yeah they're way down here and they don't take very much torque to put in place but they're very annoying um, they're very tiny easy to overlook because every other screw in this case is bigger than these these three little things most people end up just yanking until they break apart and you can imagine that doesn't help when you go to reassemble everything let's see so we have a few thin screws and we have a lot more not thin screws so the thinner screws according to this are two by threes and they're everywhere I mean pretty literally they're everywhere there's two by threes here there's two by threes here two by threes here thankfully all but these three right here and these and this and I think one more somewhere that's fairly obvious are all smaller screws these really flat ones are all two by threes and they're labeled as such then you have the ones with the arrows that look more like two and a half by fives I believe pretty common screws actually I keep a salvage drawer of laptop screws because if I salvage say this was a unit that was dead and I salvaged parts from it if I keep the parts from the salvage uh, including the screws then those screws will often fit another computer so if there's something missing or broken I can add a screw back 
It's very handy when you do this kind of work to be able to do that. Uh, now, I seem to have accidentally mixed the smaller and larger screws together. So, I'm fishing for 2x3s here. But once all the 2x3 screws are in place... Yep, that's it. That's it. I'm out of them, and now it's all 25 by 5 for the remainder of the reassembly. Let's go ahead and put this here, because the hard drives go right there. And I'm about to put those drives there. This drive, this far drive, goes first. It goes in here. It has a wire that goes down and actually sticks but we'll stick last. We'll go ahead and put the numbered end into the connector. Now your options are to take these wires and unstick them or to yank them from the hard drive and leave them in place. Um, I used to I used to yank them from the hard drive and leave them in place but eventually I found that that was a pain uh, because then you have the wire ends to fight with when you're moving batteries and connectors, blah, blah, blah. And it ends up just being better to not do that. So we'll go ahead and get end number two here. Also notice I didn't stick the wire down over there right away. There we go. Number two wires in place. All right, those wires are in place. We can now put the CMOS battery back here. It doesn't have much adhesive left. And from here, it really is just screws. Lots and lots and lots of screws. Um, they're all the same size. Two and a half by five, I believe. They're all basically the same size. Okay, maybe that one isn't. What's going on there? Oh, it's at an angle. I'm dumb, okay. It's at a bit of an angle, and I wasn't doing it. So, yeah, there you go. There is one screw that looks different than the rest, and I found that that screw is the one that pairs with the DVD drive, which you'll slide in here. And, yeah. Fun stuff. All right. Very nice. I mean, it really is straightforward. There's just a whole bunch of screws holding this thing together. The longer screws go to the hinge areas. Although this one, the uh, hinges haven't been in great shape for a while, so although the screws go through to the hinges, they don't hold the back plate on anymore because the plastics are completely gone back there. So that's fun. <laughs> I believe the only other long screw goes here, and that does seem to be right. Short screws and a lot of them with little arrows. I don't know how many there are, and I don't really care because all I care about is that they go through. Yep. Yeah, the easiest way to do it tends to be to have a system where either you, uh, you either work your way from one side to the other, or you work from the outer perimeter inward. I tend to just shotgun them, randomly kind of throw them in. There is a method to my madness, but it's pretty mad, so don't follow my method. Do as I say, not as I do. Hey! I'm a politician who can't hold a screwdriver. All right. Nah, I couldn't be a politician. Someone would assassinate me. Mm -hmm. I just ate the microphone. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, the moment of truth. Everything. One last check. Nope. Look what I forgot to do. 
put this one cable right here for the optical drive. It needs to go there. That's important. Clink. Now we're good. Always check twice because of stuff like that. One mistake, one mistake and your customer or you end up with something non-functional and that causes everyone more headaches. Um, I actually can see that I am missing a screw for some reason. I'm looking around and I don't think, I don't think I have a screw for that. So that means there was a screw somewhere that is not there anymore. Um, there was a missing screw, and now I've accidentally relocated the missing screw. That's fun. Um, well, what do I want? What do I want to do about this? All right, so this screw's missing, and I don't like that it's missing there because that's where the battery is. Uh, you know what? I'll deal with it later. All right, somewhere I had stuffed this rubber foot, and I don't know where I stuffed the rubber foot. But there was a rubber foot. I promise there was. And all I have to do is unlose it. Anyway, the two screws back here clearly hide behind the rubber feet. Um, which I've somehow managed to lose. So I'm probably going to replace those feet with better feet anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Alright, that is the reassembly work for... An HP Envy Touch Smart 17 notebook PC. Um, specific model um, doesn't really give one, does it? 17T I J100. There you go. One reassembled machine. Thanks for watching. Look down in the comments or the links or whatever below and you'll find ways to support me financially so I can continue doing videos that you like. Also, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Go check out my other channels. I have a political channel called Jody Spicy Takes. And I have a channel where I put VHS rips and some of my stock footage. It's got a long name I always forget, but it's something to the tune of Jody Bruchon Stock Footage and VHS Archives. Take a check, a look at both of those, and I will see you in a future video. Take care.